Welcome, everybody. Today is my special honor and pleasure to have Javier Dariba on the Making It Real podcast, the podcast for founders who want to take action and who not just want to take action, actually, who take action. Um, Javier. Javier is a, a co-founder of many successful companies. One is UserZoom, a hit company from Spain, a SaaS company that went international and hit, I think, Javier, you have to tell us, like it was in the millions of ARR. Um, double digit millions. Then you created the SaaS Institute, a company that helped many, many companies scale that were already growing fast to grow even faster. And now you're on, if I count correctly, your third venture, which is Bluebirds, as well a fast growing company fo focusing on the uh, sales space as well uh, and to empower sales. But let's let's get started right from the beginning because many people out there think, okay, I maybe want to uh, create a company. I don't know what was uh, what was your journey actually. What did you uh, study, and then what were your first steps to kind of decide what to do next? I um, I studied law, so I, I can't say that. From I can I can say I, from from a child I wanted to to be an entrepreneur. This is not true. In my in, I, I studied law. A part of my family studied law before, so it was quite natural for me to to do this. And 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 then uh, I decided to do the the, the MBA at the side, in fact. And and the second year of of the MBA, uh, I went to study to the University of Chicago. And it was uh, 19, 1999, so it was like the, the, the internet explosion. And then I, I got in love of, of technology. And I, 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 my, my colleagues there in, 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 the, in Chicago, uh, they were uh, starting ventures, they were getting finance. And I said, okay, this is more funny than being an, an international tax advisor or something that's what I had in mind at that moment. So then I... I at that moment, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't thought on on starting my own company, but I, I, I was sure that I wanted to to start to work on on that new thing that was internet and the technology. So I, I went back to to Madrid and and I started working at a at a consulting firm that was helping big corporations to um, to define their 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 online strategy and also to develop their online strategy. So and then I over there I, I met my 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 two co-founders of my uh, and and then is when I started when when in, I, I I I was in a project where I had a lot of time to 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 think because in this this kind of project we were lots of consulting of consultants there and and sometimes maybe you could be like one week without too much things to to do and then you start to, to think about about things. And I, 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 with my co-founders, we decided to, 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 to start working on, on our own, and we created the first, uh, the first user experience uh, consulting company in Spain. It was back, back. It was 2001, at, and 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 I think we were quite successful because we ended up with 40 people, and we grew during five, six years. Uh, and and uh, the first thing is that the, when you when you start to taste what is being an entrepreneur, I don't I don't think you 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 cannot I don't think you cannot leave it any, anymore. It's like drugs, you know. It's like the the the, the adrenaline of, of working for yourself is is something that is very difficult to. So this is how I started. Uh -huh. Super exciting. I could see them saying, okay, working for a consulting company, then we're saying, hey, we can form our own specialized consulting company and on user experiences. So I think the shocking thing is many people might remember that 2001 was kind of like the, the ice age of the internet after all the yeah. euphoria of everything will be huge. And so then the realization, oh my God, it will take forever. Nobody believed in anything I anymore. Have Jan, I have funded my three, my three companies in a, in, in a very heavy crisis because we started uh, the, this first company a few months after, uh, uh, sorry, a few months before the internet bubble crashed. Uh, we started UserZoom. Uh, we signed, it, we signed a, a financing round one week after Lehman Brothers falls. And, and finally, in Bluebirds, in, in our first uh, after our first few months in the in the market, 
we had the, the pandemic. So, so we have to learn from you then what it takes to start something in crisis. Because oftentimes, like, what would you say? Is there something that that's driving it? Then is it the just the, the strong belief that the times will be very different very soon again? Or why was it always that it was the crisis? No, I, 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 I have always started before the crisis. So not just after, before. So I didn't know that the crisis was coming. But on, on, if, if you want me to, to, to say the, the, the good part of it is that when you are starting, if, if you have a crisis, it's the right moment to keep developing product because then, then suddenly the, the market gets slowed and you have a little bit more time to, 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 to work while, while your competitors also cannot grow because in crisis moments is not. So, so I think that it's, it's, it's good times to develop a product, to build team because then you, you have a, 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 it's easier to get a, a talented resources uh, that in, in, in a hype. So, so it has its good, 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 good part. So, so in a way as well, even when people, some people are concerned about, oh my God, now with Corona, we might enter a post-economic crisis for entrepreneurs. You wouldn't say um, it's, it still has you know, various positive uh, sides, like, uh, for example, then the access that actually really great talent is available, which otherwise might be uh, stuck in some companies of uh, you know, working for some other projects. Yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, then... But feeling the sense that basically, you know, where many people say, okay, internet is not really that was overhyped. And so you said, okay, no, we, uh, we design a consulting agency focusing on the user experience as well. And so um, did you have a mind that it should become scalable? Because you actually then you grew it quite quickly to, to 40 no, people. At, where you at, for at the, at the, this, is, this is like when, when, when you start and, and, and we, uh, the, the thing is that that I, I didn't thought about scalability. I didn't thought too much about, I, I realized afterwards that uh, building a, a service company was a little bit a nightmare because the more, the more you grow, the worse is your life because, uh, uh, and, 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 and you don't get too much money because you have to invest, when you're growing, you have to invest uh, the money that you get into hi hiring new people. We were working for big companies, so we were paid 90 days uh, in this uh, scenario. So at the end, you, you, you end up with uh, 40 people. You have to start from scratch every year because these projects that you have to sell again, uh, your cash flow is negative because you have to pay your, the salaries one day and you get paid 90 days afterwards. And, and your, your, your life is really complicated because you have like uh, calls from clients all the moment, et cetera. So, so then is when you start to appreciate other type of, of, of models that are more scalable, more, um, more predictable, et cetera. And, and, and one of the reasons was one, because at the end you don't, you don't uh, I, we, we didn't create the user zoom because it was a better model because this it was because we saw a, a need in the market, but also because we saw that consulting was not a, a, a was not the company that we wanted to. Although I think that is a, a nice way of doing money, uh, making money, and 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 I understand people likes it, eh? but not in in my case. Mm -hmm. And I think as well, you wonderful showed the, the challenges that arise and when you are in the consulting space, right, where, from these very different angles, which I think as well and are already core lessons learned that could help other founders out there now as they think what to start. Uh, however, then as well, no, now with Bluebirds, um, you, you, you started in, the, in a way in the consulting space as well with the SaaS Institute where you learned about further optimizing sales processes in high growth companies. And then you said, why don't we create a software from that? Similarly, I think it was in, in uh, user Zoom where you first created a um, user design, user experience company, and then you build a software company from that. Would you say is that your overall game plan, something that has uh, proven to, to work quite well? I, I, I think it's an easy way to start because when you have a consulting business, it means several things. The first thing is that you know quite well the needs of the customer. So this is not something that you are building something with a business plan. Is that you are building something because you are a, a, you are a, a in contact with with the clients and you see a need. So this is first thing. The second thing is that you start to build a team, 
and, and also building a, a team from scratch with zero, zero is, is difficult. So with the consulting business, you build a, a team. You also get money to fund the development while you are doing consulting. So it's, sometimes it's difficult to get external funding uh, when you have just the idea. So, so again, doing consulting gives you money. You have to be very disciplined to put that money into a team to, uh, 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 to develop. So it has, it has a, a very, I think it, it has very uh, lots of cons. There are some pro, uh, so a lot, of, a lot of pros. There are some cons, but uh, this is uh, yeah a, a way for me is 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 uh, it has been quite successful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So I know that I think that as well is a great for way for people out there thinking about starting their own companies to maybe think, uh, hey, maybe you want to start as a consulting company and then turn that bit by bit into a software company to solve the problems that you discussed. One one challenge with that approach is uh, one is that I personally find you know, ha ha working with different uh, consulting companies uh, who then have this idea of scale building scalable SaaS software businesses is that for them, typically, it's very hard to kind of detach the consultants to really start a project, right? They want to do it, but in reality, then they, they never really have the resources and the focus and so to, to virtually start a company. How, which advice would you give in those situations, how, how to transition from this starting as a consulting company to starting to become a more of a product, maybe software focused company? The first thing is to be, you have to, to be sure that uh, the, uh, that that your main business are, is going to be software, because if you think that that uh, um, at the end you have to choose where to put the, the resources at some point. So if if and, and it's difficult because the consulting is giving you a lot of money. So you have to sometimes to to decide to 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 I wouldn't say to kill, but to to reduce the growth of the consulting in order to to bet for something that it is quite intangible. And it's quite easy to sell a project of, uh, in consulting of uh, 25,000 or 50,000. And it's very difficult to sell a software of 50 to 25,000 and 50,000. So, so th this is the first thing that at the end you will have to choose and, and, and you have to be sure from the beginning that you're gonna choose a, a, a software. The second thing is that you have to put dedicated resources. If you think, no, they are gonna do this in 50%, no, because Consulting is it, you need a lot of dedication, so mm, people is not going to be able to to work at both at both things. So you have to put just dedicated people for for um, uh, for for the software thing, and then it, they, they, there is a moment in which you have to jump from one place to the other, and and then put a, a, another person in. in consulting business. Mm -hmm. If we take the, uh, the example of user Zoom, right, so you had the consultants and we're scaling up to, uh, the consultants. Uh, remember then how you started the, the, the software business where you're setting first developers aside who is doing the product development to build out the software? Yeah, uh, so uh, we didn't have technical capabilities. Uh, we had the idea, but we, we were not uh, programmers, the founders. So uh, we decided to do a, 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 a joint venture with a, with a tech, a, a tech consulting business uh, in, in, a, a, so in exchange of some equity, uh, they developed the first version of, 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 uh, of user Zoom. And then some months afterwards, we hired a, a couple of of developers of that company with the agreement of that other company. So it was something that we agreed and they came to, 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 to what it was users. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest that as well? Thing, and this uh -huh. is the thing that, that it helped us to, it helped us to, to be in, in this, in this crisis moment, because uh, in crisis moment, this consulting, uh, tech consulting business, they, they have free resources and they are okay to say, okay, I can, I can put those free resources in a venture and let's see uh, when they cannot do this when, when you are in, in uh, growing a lot because they don't have those resources. So this also helps. Mm -hmm. Fascinating perspective as well. And I think it's very timely because right now we have the crisis and I assume as well that some tech companies might have some additional resources there or in the areas. Did you do the same then with the SaaS Institute and Bluebird? Was that similar or was that a different? No, in, the, in this case, I just hired, I just hired the tech team, right? I hired and, 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 and the CTO was uh, 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 also 
with uh, had uh, equity on, on the company. Uh, I, I chose uh, yeah another another. I th I thought that we needed uh, tech uh, tech uh, resources from the beginning, so I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and would you say in terms of is that learning now where you say coming from consulting uh, uh, background and trying to build a software company? One way it's definitely doable to work with an outsourced kind of agency approach to then take some developers in house, or you'd say it's actually maybe easier, maybe more direct to say, no, just hire a CTO, build out that tech team um, directly. It's much better, uh, I would say, it's, it's much better to, to hire the CTO from the beginning and find a, a co-founder if you don't have the technical knowledge. So I, I the, the thing is that, Sometimes you have to do what you have, what you, what the possibilities that you have. And when we started 20 years ago, we didn't have strong relationships in, in, the, in, the, in the industry. So we didn't know CTOs that we could convince to, to join us. And, and, and uh, good people doesn't come maybe with a guy with 25 years, 25 years old that, or, you know, so, so, uh, uh, so I think that it's very easy to say, yeah, the best thing is to hire from the beginning a, C a good CTO. The thing is that uh, when you're young, maybe it's not easy for you to, to reach those, those people. Although I think that now it's easier than, than 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I think as well, it's very helpful to you know to give people a sense of what might be the ideal uh, configuration and they can try to aim for that and I think at the same yeah. time as well it's great to know that there are like a thousand ways they say in German lead to Rome so there's various ways to kind of build the companies and that you can be as well as a successful um, whatever route there you take right so I, I can see you guys now working on the product on one side you have the agency kind of developing that or later then with Bluebirds where, where you have a CTO then um, is that in terms of developing that tech team is that like a minimal configuration would you say would you now prefer to say is it good to have like this lone star coding hero or are you trying to build a first tech team that has i don't know minimum of x developers how would you think about um, building product i think what what it is key and i think we've done it very well in at, at bluebirds is is to have a, a product person besides uh, the CTO. So from your idea to the technical implementation, there is a, there is a, a, a place, uh, there is a, a role that has to land your idea into, into specifications. And, and normally a good, a good CTO or a good developer don't know how to do this. Uh, and, and maybe you don't have either the skills to, to do this. So it, I think that in, in Bloomers we did very well, we hired uh, from the beginning a product person that was in charge of a, of of um, yeah of of of, of uh, going from from what we wanted to do the strategy the customer needs into the specifications to develop that uh, that product and i think that this maybe is quite expensive at the beginning because it's one one role that you wouldn't think on this but i think that at the end you will build something more accurate, more, more that will fit better with customer needs, that will have a better user experience, uh, uh, and 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 also the tech team will go faster because the, the things are very well defined. So because otherwise, if you don't define very very well the things, they have to be done by the tech team. They have to spend time defining things, and they are not experts on this. So maybe instead of of, of having four developers. Okay, have three developers and one product person. Mm -hmm. In terms of building out that and thinking about building out that tech team, would you say is that just uh, is there a minimum amount or a certain amount of people that, that you try to build? Is it like we want to have one uh, kind of lead developer, full stack developer, then front end? Also, how, how do you think about building the tech team? The tech team, you, you the more you, you you want, the more you. I mean, you, you never. It's like it's like it's like a cake or ice cream, or you could eat and eat, and you want more and more and more, and 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 you start to think about money and say, okay, if I save this, I will be able to pay one more developer. You, this is your life, no? It's like you think about you. So so, I I, I the, the the you need to you 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 need to develop fast. So you need. People, you you have a lot of ideas, and and it's not it's not easy from going from zero to 
to having a, a, an, an MVP. So it's very difficult to say, you, you, the more you can, the, the better. And I think that it's better to any, any resource you can have, put it there. Uh -huh. So I love the comparison with the ice cream. It's basically imagine there as well you can imagine. You know, then it's uh, what, how much budget do you have? Well, that's the ice cream that you're going to get, right? Yes. yes. Uh huh. In terms of then, you uh, know, uh, to to launch uh, into the market, how long should that take? Is it like do you have the uh, milestone where you say that max six months or so? Or this is this is a, a this is a, a good question and so it's something that. That's I, I really don't know the, the the I really don't know the answer. I know what I've done and I don't I don't know if it's been right or not. The thing is that you have lots of doubts on 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 if you want to be very if you want to wait until you have really something very, very good, then it can take a, a lot of time. If you go to the market very early. Uh, you you can have lots of angry customers that is something that you don't want either so yes uh, and and the, the more you spend on developing it's true that you're gonna have a stronger product but on the other hand is uh, uh, you have more possibilities of of um, of of developing something that it is not what the customer needs because at the end you have an idea that you you, you are not the customer so, and so I think it's, it's, it's quite difficult. I mean, it's, 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 quite, uh, it's quite difficult. And, uh, it's, uh, and, and, and the, the more th uh, uh, you plan for six months and it's always gonna be like three more months. So, so I, my, 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 recommendation, my recommendation would be to try to go to the, to the market as soon as possible. Although there is some risk, eh? but I would say go, go early to the market because you will, it's, it's very expensive to realize that the core of your product doesn't fit into your customer needs. And the only way to know it is go and sell. Mm -hmm. And in this process, would you say as well, you no know, one would be to say to have that external launch day, the better launch with the first type of customers where people think, oh, at that point we have to have this fully functional product. Or are you thinking as well about, is it good to launch almost more the UX side of things coming from UX, actually from user Zoom, uh, to test the consumer flow, see what they uh, think, kind of co-develop that with the customer together? Yeah, yes. So, of course, of course, uh, doing UX research helps a lot. But UX research has, one thing is to develop something that it is usable. And this is what user research can, can help you. If, if, if people can do what they want to do, if if the button has to be there, if the if, if the information architecture is right, if the navigation is right, etc. This this can be done through user research. But what is this market research is a which this is something that I don't believe too much on research. The, the, my feeling is that and I've done a lot of I've done hundreds of of market research in 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 my past past experiences. And I think that the best market research is going going to the market and try to sell and 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 sell and 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 see the problems that is for me is the only way or or the more reliable way to do it. Fascinating. I'm as well a big fan of sell it before you actually make it. Was there something when when did you start selling here in this case? So one thing I think that was great, great was you had the customer relationships through this consulting projects that you did before. So you knew the customers very well, which situation they were in, which kind of product would help them a lot. Uh, right. So that came in a way from, I guess, from the consulting space. But did you as well then really involve and try to commit already um, with the first set of customers before you build the product? Um, the, the thing is that when, when you are a consulting business, uh, uh, what you can do is to things that the product don't do, a person can, can, can do it. And I think that this is a good way of, of going a little bit early to the market, but then you, the things that the product cannot do, you have people that it is doing it. So it's totally inefficient, uh, but, but it is a good way of, of knowing before developing things Maybe uh, developing things is say, hey, what I, uh, there's, there's, let's have one person doing this and very manual. And and once you are, you really see what you have to develop, then you 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 you, you do it. And I think this is not just only at the beginning. Eh? I think that I think during the first years is like this. I mean, you have to put a lot of of people doing things uh, to go to to solve a, a feature. And then when when you see that 
this this makes sense, then you productize this 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 work. Mm -hmm. And and for the coming now, for example, if we take user Zoom or Bluebird, did you have when you started? Okay, now we start the product development, the software development. Um, did you have customers already in a way signed or committed that they say, okay, if you build it, I pay you for that, or or so? Or how did that work? How did you get the first customers? I uh, I think that it's very difficult to 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 get a customer like like this. Eh? But me, at least in my experience, I know that there, there's been other cases in which it's it's been possible. But in my I have I I have the feeling that no one wants to be the first on on buying your your product. So uh, I think it's not the the, the I, I think it's not the the right approach. At the end at the end uh, you 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 get your first customers because because uh, they they trust on 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 you because they know that you've been doing consulting with you and 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 you know also very well which are their pains so uh, so you know that the this this mvp that you have are going to solve part of their problems and this is at the, at the in fact this is why you built it we were thinking of on, on them so so i think that this this trust it makes possible that they buy something that is maybe uh, is is is, uh, is 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 not enough mature for other type of customers. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So I hear as well really the idea of starting with consulting that helps you build this relationship, really deep, profound customer understanding. And since you then have this relationship, you can test things out, and people are willing to commit uh, to things and and test your product as well because you have that good relationship, and they know that you're working very hard in that space. Yeah. No. No. Totally. Totally. And, and, and I think that at the end, uh, the, the, in, in these cases, uh, uh, um, you work the double that you, would, that, that you could do in a project because you know that, that uh, you have to deliver more, more to, to but, but it pays off because you have a customer, uh, the, customer is, uh, the customer is happy and maybe uh, from an economic perspective doesn't make any sense because this is the, the real thing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do you remember with user Zoom how you got the first customers? Yes, yes. There are lots of uh, stories around uh, around around that. In 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 in, in uh, one is in in a in a in a in a in a party in a in a conference uh, all night trying to sell trying to sell a user uh, trying to sell user Zoom and we 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 managed to to do it. It was. It was like a very strange uh, type of uh, of sale, um, and 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 also uh, I remember one big customers we got in user one of of the first one, uh, we did a beta with them for almost one year in which they were using it for for free, giving us uh, feedback in exchange of this, and when we end up this beta program, they they bought so. Mm -hmm. Wonderful as well, and co-developed with them. Uh, one core thing as well that I always uh, found, uh, found fascinating, you are building these companies from Barcelona, and then you really scale them globally. I think like a lot of revenue and user Zoom came from the US. Now with Bluebirds, you as well already international. I think in the UK market, in the uh, German market, most likely very soon in the US market. Um, What's this, how important when we talk about internationalization and getting these customers, when is a good time for you personally, when you think is a good time to internationalize and how to win these first international customers? I, 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 I try to think, and, and this is like very personal view of, of, of the world, that I try to see um, that, I don't want to see the, the frontiers on, on my head. I think that that uh, it, when when you you and I we are we, you are German, I am Spanish, and there are not so much differences. I mean, at the end, uh, at the end, there are not so much different. Maybe the only difference is that that uh, that you uh, that you come from a colder weather, I come home from a hotter weather, and you speak a language and I speak another language, but. Uh, why I cannot? Why I can sell better to a to a Madrid guy than to a a a, 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 a German guy? At the end, uh, I don't I don't see big, uh, thinking that if you would tell me, for example, if you would tell me um, uh, why I can sell better 
a, a Barcelona guy than a Madrid or a, or a Munich person. I would say, okay, because maybe I know more people in Barcelona. And then it makes sense at the beginning to start in your, in your backyard with the people that you know is easier and, and people has a reference about you. But, and, and then it makes sense. This is why you start selling to, to, to people that you know and normally, normally because because it's not always it's not always true that your contacts are in your home city. So, so but once you start to do like a sales strategy, then for me it doesn't make any sense to 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 prioritize Madrid or Valencia instead of of Munich or Frankfurt or, or because so this is so I could say almost from the beginning because from the beginning you start to start. You, you need to start hire, hiring salespeople. So why to hire them from Spanish, from, from, from Spain, if you know that maybe a couple of years after or one year, your main market is gonna be another one. So I would say that almost from the beginning, which you, you should start with like an international uh, uh, approach. How to get the first customers then in those markets? If you say, okay, we started in the US uh, from the get go, uh, then typically people are like, oh, you're from a Spanish company that's really far away. You might not know the, the needs that we have or so, right? Because there is still in the heads of people this perception about like just physical distances supposedly mean as well oftentimes. I, I think that one thing that is very cheap to, to achieve is that, uh, and I think that with users, we did it very well. I, I was one, once in a... In a, in a in a, in a conference in Germany and, and someone told me, hey, I, wow, I thought UserZoom was a, a, a German company. And I was an, in another conference in, in the US and someone told me, hey, I thought UserZoom was a, a US company. Uh, uh, I think that, that you can localize very easy uh, the, the website and, 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 and do it in different languages if it is necessary. Uh, uh, and they don't need to know that you are from, that you are from here at the end. And, and, so you are not from where you are, from where you have born. A company is is where is is also based on the people that is working there. So if it is international, uh, I, I I wouldn't say that Bluebirds is an is an Spanish company. Yeah, it's located in Barcelona. It's been born in Barcelona. I am from Barcelona, but most of the people there are not from Barcelona, and they are also part of Bluebirds. So. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I love this international mindset and as well and not really thinking big and going uh, to the markets and, and not as well in a way I guess many people are afraid then to, to approach it because they feel also initially maybe different but to say hey, you know like uh, we are all international and we you know we build international companies so, so let's get going you know on that uh, regard. Um, any advice for how to close the first customers because oftentimes then people asking for references as well and so and then that might not be the initial references. I mean, then we learned, okay, it's great if you already previously engaged in consulting projects as well so that you can build this relationship. But what if you go, let's say, to Germany and you know you don't have these con uh, relationships there yet maybe? It's, it's from a theoretically point of view, it's difficult to, it's difficult to say it in, 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 in uh, um, sometimes, sometimes it happens, for example, that uh, uh, you close a, a deal in, in one country because the, the responsible of that of um, uh, 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 and, and, and it is not a strategy, but this is how it happens. Uh, maybe you close a, a deal in, in in I don't know in the Netherlands without any reference uh, because the other guy is from Spain and they, he knows you and he's living in. So sometimes these things happen that that uh, um, even if it is an international company, you have had previous relationship with that person or in your previous job, you already worked with that, with this, with this, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, person. Um, also in consulting, uh, uh, you also have references in that, in that country maybe. So, uh, uh -huh. Wonderful. I love the really, I think, actionable suggestions. No, on one side is, yes, with the consulting, you build the relationship, but then if you go abroad as well, maybe there's the expat network, no, where you have people in these international new companies would have come from the same country or you have some other or, thing. Or same school, do. same business school. Also that, that, uh, that the, you also, I, I studied in the, I studied the, the MBA in Sade and I had peers from all the, from all the nationalities that also has helped me in, 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 in developing my, my, my network.
Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, Javi, you as well, you're definitely an extremely good strategist when it comes to go to market, the marketing and sales part. If we have people that are first time founders that think about how to get the sales area started, do you have some early advice and maybe in a follow on episode that we can go deep on the sales function because there as well, you're one of the experts. But if we take it maybe at this initial getting started level, uh, that what are what would you say are the maybe the top mistakes that founders do and when it comes to selling your product and uh, and then we'll look at how to solve that i think that i think that that uh, um, uh, that the strategy i think is is much more important than what founders and, and in general people think and and, and 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 sometimes we put a lot of effort in in implement in implement actions and and less less on thinking what is going to be how you are going to position in the market what you need in order to position in 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 in, in that uh, like, like, like this and and to, to which to which type of customers are you gonna are you gonna go which is your difference with the with the competitors which is the value proposition that you are so things that that and i think that this is you don't get it right from 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 the beginning so uh, you you go out to the market with one idea, and after a couple of years, three years, five years, you 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 understand the market more, and you understand the dynamics of the market more, and you have to be all the time saying, okay, now we are we we are going to this target market, but this this is getting very crowded, and and, and we should go to this uh, to this other because this other type of customer is demanding this. So I think that before implementing just a sales strategy like if you already had the product market fit it would say be sure that that you are addressing the right um, the, the right target market with the right value proposition with the right uh, product uh, um, understand very because you can then if, if you if you implement an, a, a sales strategy that it means a lot of investment and you don't have right this uh, i think that's uh, you're gonna be switching mm -hmm. and moving. So I would I would say to pay a lot of attention to to strategic things from a very practical perspective. Eh? I, but but uh, to think a lot about where is your blue ocean, uh, uh, where is your the, the, the blue ocean, and and and, and, and before trying to, before thinking how you're gonna get this blue ocean, understand very well which is where is the blue ocean, why you etc. Mm -hmm. So, so I, uh, no, I hear so much on the classical, the, the product market fit. No, really make sure before thinking too much of scaling, of ramping up sales, make sure that you have this really good market understanding that you just develop by being in the market iterations and then knowing exactly who the persona or the ideal customer profile, the target customer is, developing the value proposition out, testing the product on it, and so on, these iterations. And, and, the, and the product market fit changes because 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 you are you, the, the, the smaller the target market you address, the higher possibility of selling you will have because you customize more your your message, your product, etc. But when you start to grow, then you need bigger target markets, bigger niches, and then you need, need you need to switch. And this is something that you cannot switch from one day to the other. You need to you need to 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 switch product, some of the features. You need you need to switch mm -hmm. your your positioning. You need so uh, it's at least building a SaaS uh, is very difficult to get a product market. At least in my experience, it's very difficult to get a, 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 a product market fit from the beginning and and grow in that market uh, product market in that target market. Uh, up to 50 million and it's difficult because you don't you don't start with a so high, high uh, big market mm -hmm. wonderful so to really pay attention to that first create kind of product market fit in, in one specific market but then really think about how to develop it to be relevant for a much bigger market and so so to really plan this product evolution the value proposition evolution and so on no and the target customer yeah, based on this, for example, no, is even if your your idea from the beginning can be to sell to big enterprise, it's difficult to launch selling to big enterprise because the, their needs 
are uh, they, they need so, some security things that is very tough to have it, uh, have them at the beginning they need lots of admin options that you don't have at the beginning so so uh, maybe you have to start in one market in one target market and then one you're prepared and switch to to another one no? it's very difficult sometimes sometimes to start in 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 the in the enterprise business uh, mm -hmm. wonderful so no as well we can really see the evolution there the going up market first finding the right sweet spot for a startup as well that you can cater to really well and then maybe bit by bit building out the market size um, no, and definitely in the follow-on, we'll focus on go-to-market and more marketing and sales-related questions. For now, for today as well, no, having started now different companies, being consulting companies, turned product companies, um, what keeps you going in a way? Because, uh, no, you could say as well, hey, you know, I've had my nice exit, I could have retired or so. Um, why are you starting the companies? What's for you personally so exciting about it? Uh... This is this is is difficult to is difficult to to uh, it's difficult to answer. But at, at at the end of the day, you ask you ask yourself, hey, what I why I know know how to do in life. Uh, if I am a plumber, I am a what I am, and and then at the end, uh, you say, no, I am I I I know how to how to how to manage uh, to manage teams to manage people in order to to achieve uh, something, and I feel comfortable. In that, in that, uh, uh, in that place, and I enjoy, it. and and I, I, it, it, this is what it gives me energy every day, more than play uh, a, a paddle game, uh, to 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 meet with the team and to and to work on this, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So here we can see the entrepreneur. Your uh, <laughs> job is not the plumber, it's the entrepreneur building companies. Javier, thanks so much for taking the time and sharing all these wonderful insights. Thank you very much, Jan. Bye.